The Food Network's journey hasn't been smooth sailing. The channel has faced several major controversies over the years, with some incidents causing significant upheaval among its audience and shaking the network to its core. In 2009, chef Anne Burrell faced a lawsuit alleging discrimination against female staff at Centro Venoteca, where she previously worked. The suit claimed Burrell used offensive language towards the women, made inappropriate comments about their appearance, and discussed their personal lives. It was also alleged that she retaliated by firing those who complained. The case was settled with confidentiality, and Burrell has not publicly addressed the allegations. Jamie Oliver, known for his show The Naked Chef, sparked controversy with a product called Punchy Jerk Rice. Despite the playful name, Oliver's rice isn't genuinely Jamaican. The term jerk rice itself is problematic, as jerk is traditionally a spice rub for meat, not a rice dish. Oliver's attempt to blend traditional Jamaican flavors into his product was met with backlash from many in the Jamaican community. Critics, including a Jamaican chef who had previously taught Oliver about authentic jerk chicken, expressed their discontent. British MP Don Butler, daughter of Jamaican immigrants, denounced the product as cultural appropriation. Although Oliver claimed his intention was to celebrate Jamaican cuisine, his explanation did little to soothe the outrage. The controversy underscores the sensitivity surrounding cultural representation and authenticity, leaving many to question whether Oliver's tribute crossed the line. In 2014, Jada De Laurentiis and Todd Thompson announced their separation after 11 years of marriage, shortly after Thompson filed for divorce citing irreconcilable differences. This news quickly stirred up rumors, with tabloids speculating about alleged affairs involving De Laurentiis and celebrities like Matt Lauer, John Mayer, and Bobby Flay. The rumors about Mayer had been circulating since 2010, which De Laurentiis had denied at the time. When her split from Thompson coincided with Flay's divorce from Stephanie March, the media jumped to conclusions. De Laurentiis refuted these claims, insisting, well, we're very good friends, but I don't think that's ever going to happen because I'm smarter than that. Once the storm of speculation settled, Meredith Vieira interviewed De Laurentiis, who shared her perspective on overcoming the turmoil with resilience and grace started to realize like I know why I fell in love with cooking because it makes me happy yeah. and because it's the place that I feel the strongest the most empowered the most creative it's where I can stand on my own two feet in 2011 Ina Garten the beloved host of Barefoot Contessa faced backlash when she declined two requests from six-year-old Enzo Pareda who was battling leukemia to meet her through the Make-A-Wish Foundation due to her busy schedule the incident was highlighted by Enzo's family on a now defunct blog drawing media scrutiny to make amends, Garten invited Enzo to appear on her show, but the Paredes declined, choosing instead to fulfill Enzo's wish of swimming with dolphins. In 2011, celebrity chef Jeffrey Zakarian faced a major setback when he declared bankruptcy amid a class action lawsuit from former employees of his now closed restaurant, Country. The lawsuit alleged Zakarian had underpaid his staff by falsifying overtime records and deducting wages for meals not provided. The workers sought $1 million in damages plus an additional $250,000 in penalties. Compounding the issue, the New York Times revealed that Zakarian's former business partners supported the employees' claims, stating that Zakarian had indeed breached labor laws. These partners also accused him of dubious practices, such as charging personal expenses to the restaurant's credit. Zakarian, however, denied all accusations and maintained his innocence. He also claimed financial incapacity to contest the allegations, leading to his bankruptcy. Despite the scandal, Zakarian's legal and financial troubles underscored the complexities of managing high-profile restaurants. In 2010, chef Mario Batali faced controversy when a class action lawsuit was filed by 117 former employees alleging that he had illegally skimmed tips taking 4 to 5% of the gratuities intended for his servers. The lawsuit claimed that this misconduct had occurred across his restaurants. By 2012, Batali settled the suit, agreeing to pay $5.25 million to the affected employees for lost tips from July 2004 to February 2012. Batali's troubles continued in 2017 when he was accused by four women of inappropriate touching over a span of two decades. While Batali did not dispute the allegations, he issued a statement acknowledging the claims and expressing regret. That behavior was wrong and there are no excuses. I take full responsibility and am deeply sorry for any pain, humiliation, or discomfort I have caused to my peers, employees, customers, friends, and family. 
Vitaly's second apology came via an email newsletter, where he not only expressed regret, but also shared a link to his pizza dough cinnamon rolls, which have since been nicknamed Apology Rolls Online. Despite his attempt at making amends, Batali's career suffered significantly. ABC dismissed him from his role on The Chew, and the Food Network canceled plans to revive his show, Molto Mario. In 2013, Paula Dean faced major backlash after revealing her use of the racial slur N-word. The controversy emerged from a lawsuit filed by a former employee of her restaurant. As Dean's career unraveled, she issued heartfelt apologies to fans and colleagues. I beg for your forgiveness. Dean's apology would have seemed more genuine if her company hadn't defended her by claiming she used the slur in a different era, suggesting it was somehow acceptable then. She was born 60 years ago when America's South had schools that were segregated, different bathrooms, different restaurants, and Americans rode in different parts of the bus. This is not today. Chef Robert Irvine first gained fame as the charismatic host of Food Network's Dinner Impossible boasting a glittering resume that included a British knighthood and claims of cooking for former U.S. presidents. He even asserted he had crafted Princess Diana's wedding cake. However, in 2008, it was revealed that many of these accolades were exaggerated or false. The scandal led to Irvine leaving Dinner Impossible in disgrace, with Michael Simon taking over as host. Despite the controversy, Irvine issued a public apology, and Food Network eventually reinstated him, allowing him to rebuild his career. For fans of Down Home with the Neelys, Pat and Gina Neely appeared to be the quintessential couple, seamlessly blending their personal and professional lives. However, their seemingly perfect world came crashing down when their marriage ended abruptly and their show and restaurants followed suit. In a 2018 People magazine interview, Gina revealed that their 20-year marriage had lost its spark long before the TV show came into the picture. She admitted that the strain of maintaining a facade of marital bliss on screen while feeling unhappy behind the scenes became unbearable. By 2014, Gina decided to leave Pat, and from that point forward, their communication was handled solely through lawyers. This unexpected turn of events led to the swift dissolution of their personal and professional ventures. The crazy part about it was I never wanted to do that show. I never wanted to live my life quite out loud like that. Despite the initial struggle, Pat has moved on, remarrying and starting a new family. Meanwhile, Gina took a different path, making a reality TV appearance on Bravo's To Roam for Love. Though Down Home with the Neelys is still immortalized through reruns, its once perfect image now feels tainted by the reality behind the scenes. In 2013, chef Nigella Lawson's pristine reputation faced scrutiny amid a high-profile legal battle. Lawson and her ex-husband, Charles Sachi, accused their former assistants, Francesca and Elisabetta Grillo, of embezzling hundreds of thousands of pounds. The Grillo sisters countered that Lawson had permitted them to use the funds on the condition they kept her drug use secret from Sachi. They alleged that Lawson had a daily cocaine habit and a history of prescription drug abuse. During the trial, Lawson testified in court addressing these claims. I have never been a drug addict. I have never been a habitual user. There are two times in my life when I have used cocaine. The Grillo sisters were cleared of all charges. Mexican chef Marcela Viadalid, known for her shows like Mexican Made Easy in the Kitchen, and British chef Paul Hollywood, famous for the Great British Bake Off, made headlines in 2013 when they teamed up as judges on the American baking competition. Off screen, their chemistry led to a brief romance, which had significant repercussions. Both chefs' personal lives were upended. Hollywood's wife sought a divorce and Viadalid's marriage also ended. While Viadalid's career saw a downturn, Hollywood continued to flourish, remaining a prominent figure in cooking shows and competitions on networks including The Cooking Channel. In 2011, Guy Fieri faced backlash after offensive comments he made surfaced. David Page, creator and former producer of diners, drive-ins, and dives, revealed that Fieri had reacted negatively when he discovered that a restaurant they were visiting was owned by a same-sex couple. Page recounted that Fieri called him, saying, you can't send me to talk to gay people without warning. Those people weird me out. Following this incident, Page noted that producers were instructed to flag any signs of homosexuality during pre-interviews. The controversy raised serious questions about Fieri's views and led to criticism of his conduct. In 2017, during a live taping of Iron Chef Showdown, Food Network star Bobby Flay shocked everyone by stripping off his chef's coat to reveal a shirt that read, this is my last Iron Chef battle ever. This dramatic move caught the producers off guard and threw them into immediate damage control as they scrambled to figure out how to handle the unexpected stunt in editing. Flay's response was nonchalant. 
I know, that's the point. Later, Flay revealed to People that his stunt was meant as a playful prank for the season finale and expressed willingness to return to the show. However, by 2018, it became clear that his stunt was more than just a joke. Flay confessed to Michael Simon that the demanding schedule of six to eight battles a week had become overwhelming. It crushes me because it's 60 minutes of pure energy, creativity, and execution. And so, at some point I was like, I've been doing this for a long time, and I want to go out on a high note. Though Food Network was displeased with his dramatic exit and chose not to air the stunt, Flay defended his actions, calling it an entertaining moment for television. In the second season of The Pioneer Woman, Reed Drummond faced backlash after making a racially insensitive joke. While preparing Asian hot wings for her family, the dish was met with disapproval, sparking outrage among viewers who took offense at the comment. Drummond then quipped. I'm just kidding, guys. I wouldn't do that to you. And swapped out the Asian hot wings for American buffalo wings. The blog Thick Dumpling Skin criticized Drummond and Food Network for the offensive joke, writing, why must we watch non-Asian cooks show us how to make our own dishes? And how come when they do, we have to watch as their entire family mocks it? Like in this episode of The Pioneer Woman. In 2017, Eater urged Food Network to pull the episode from airing. Rachel Ray has evolved from a renowned celebrity chef into a multifaceted mogul, TV host, author, entrepreneur, and passionate advocate for animals. Her dedication to pets is so profound that she developed a special pet food line, Nutrish, inspired by her own dog. A portion of the profits from Nutrish goes to the Rachel Ray Foundation, which supports animal welfare. However, in 2018, Ray faced legal trouble when a $5 million lawsuit alleged that Nutrish pet food contained glyphosate, a herbicide commonly found in weed killers like Roundup. The lawsuit claimed this chemical was present among the natural ingredients in her pet food line. Despite the legal challenge, Rachel Ray was not personally named in the lawsuit and continued to feed Nutrish to her own dog. PetSmart, a major retailer of Nutrish, maintained its partnership with Ray, but promised to monitor the situation closely. Although the lawsuit was eventually dismissed, the controversy, coupled with earlier complaints and recalls of her pet food products, has cast doubt on her reputation as an animal nutrition expert. In 2014, Michael Simon took part in a beach volleyball tournament supporting the Armed Forces Foundation, part of the South Beach Wine and Food Festival. The event featured celebrity chefs and Sports Illustrated models. However, controversy erupted when Simon shared a photo of himself with Chrissy Teigen on his lap. Fans were quick to react, with some questioning his loyalty to his wife while others defended him. The image sparked heated debates on social media, with numerous comments from people arguing about Simon's personal life. Despite the uproar, Simon remained unbothered by the backlash. Wow, some people have to chill a bit. In South Beach for wine and food event, doing a photo shoot. Liz is with me and Chrissy is a friend. Sandra Lee's 2009 Kwanzaa cake was harshly criticized by AV Club as a heap of absurdity drenched in despair and topped with nonsense. Anthony Bourdain's comment was even more brutal. The most terrifying thing I've ever seen is Lee making a Kwanzaa cake. Watch that clip and tell me your eyeballs don't burst into flames. It's a war crime on television. The infamous Kwanzaa cake was an angel food cake topped with store-bought frosting, pumpkin seeds, and corn nuts mistakenly called acorns, and filled with apple pie filling. While the dessert itself was far from impressive, it wasn't just the culinary disaster that caused an uproar. The real controversy lay in how Lee presented this mess as a Kwanzaa celebration. Salon reported that Queens College professor and cookbook author Jessica Harris confirmed its complete lack of authenticity going so far as to criticize the cake as a creation by someone without the first clue about the holiday's traditions. Paula Deen's food, known for its indulgence, was never exactly health conscious. So, when she revealed a type 2 diabetes diagnosis, it didn't shock many. Issues arose, however, when Dean disclosed that her 2012 announcement actually came three years after her diagnosis. When questioned about the delay, she responded, I wanted to wait until I had something to bring to the table. Paula Deen's scandal deepened with her deal with Novo Nordisk, the company behind a non-insulin diabetes drug. Deen and her sons became the faces of this major pharmaceutical campaign, intensifying the backlash. Critics, according to ABC News, 
slammed her for concealing her diagnosis while continuing to promote a cooking style laden with butter, sugar, and oversized portions. The Food Network quickly distanced itself, claiming ignorance about her health issues. Meanwhile, celebrities debated the hypocrisy of her endorsement deal and the timing of her revelation. Anthony Bourdain's remarks captured the controversy succinctly when he tweeted, thinking of getting into the leg-breaking business, so I can profitably sell crutches later. Graham Elliott, a former Iron Chef contestant, faced backlash over allegations of improper tip handling at his Chicago restaurant. In 2012, former waiter Gregory Curtis filed a lawsuit claiming that the restaurant's tip pooling practices were illegal. Curtis and 12 other ex-employees argued that the practice, which distributed tips among food runners and cooks, violated federal law. According to the law, tip pooling is only permissible among those who traditionally receive tips, such as servers, not kitchen staff. The lawsuit sought compensation for the lost wages due to these unlawful practices. Elliot chose not to challenge the claims and ultimately settled the dispute with his former employees for an undisclosed sum. 